So welcome back. This is a, another book study from School Story. Uh, the book that we're going to discuss and talk about is Permission to Feel by Mark Brackett, uh, PhD. And it's, it's interesting because in this world of um, the SEL and different things like that, we, at least uh, where we live, we're getting a lot of pushback about social emotional learning and different things like that. And I, and I understand some of the pushback, but really what it comes down to when we talk to, you know, students and parents is as a, as an administrator, I want students and adults for that matter to be able to identify name and manage their emotions. That's, that's really what we're talking about. And when I say manage, sometimes going through those emotions, uh, maybe sometimes expressing them in different ways, uh, maybe talking with somebody else about that, uh, identifying them, you know, is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it, um, are you hungry, right? Or that there's different things that, that go along with that. Anyway, um, uh, I, I absolutely love this book and I'm a Gen Xer. And so I grew up uh, with baby boomer parents and the idea of sharing emotions specifically in our home was was very very um looked down upon it was just kind of grin and bear it and just and just manage thing anyway so and and he talks about that mark brockett talks about that in in kind of his opening thing where he talks about um you know uh having adults in your life that that didn't listen and he talks about his his uncle marvin who did listen and helped him open up about his feelings. And I think one of our roles as administrators is to help other people express and share their feelings. And one of, one of the ways that we can do that as leaders is to help our teachers do that and then teach them how to help their students do that. Um, not some sort of scripted, you know, um, formatted way, but in a real caring, loving way um, that we can do that. So, you know, he, he goes on and talks about his own experience. And then he, he talks a lot about how emotions are information. Anytime that we are feeling emotions, both in good and bad ways, that should be information about our self. It should be, um, or we should use that information about ourselves, whether that's our memory, how we're learning, the decisions that we're making, the relationships that we have. We know through numerous studies and other books, which we'll talk about later, how our emotions affect our health, both in the moment and long term health wise, as far as, um, you know, heart and different things like that. And so the challenge that he kind of gives the, the reader is to become an emotion scientist where you are looking at your emotions on why and how and you know coming up with hypotheses and kind of experimenting with your emotions and then you can start to identify things in others right and so this idea of becoming an emotion scientist is if I'm in a bad mood or I'm feeling an angry and emo an angry emotion, I generally will be more critical or judgmental of others. This is just a small example. Whereas if I'm in a happy mood, I may let some things that I would normally be frustrated with go. And you can see that in your own life as an administrator or a leader in your building or assistant principal, whatever, but also in the teachers that you work with. Sometimes teachers have more patience when they are in a better mood and that's just a natural thing right as a parent i see that all the time too right anyway so uh, he goes on to talking about recognizing emotion how you measure those um when you know it's there's this funny moment right when uh we ask somebody hey how are you doing and and the the the, the kicker with that though is when we ask somebody how they're doing most times we don't really want them to go in and open up to us. That's more of just a, a courtesy thing. And he talks about what if we, what if we actually cared? What if we actually listened to our teachers when we said, Hey, how are you doing? They said, you know, I'm not doing very well. Well, tell me what's going on, whether that's in a one-on-one, -on -one, whether that's in, that's a whole nother thing, but whether it's in a one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's, you know, passing them in the hallway and you have a couple of minutes to take a moment, 
with with them, uh, with that with the students in in the building. Um, when you start to create, he talks about this emotional capital with others. Um, you start to develop where they're more willing and open to share their emotions. And as, as people share their emotions more, they start to recognize them and they can start to navigate their emotions um, a little bit, a little bit better. Right. So he also talks about the skill of, and I talked about this at the beginning, identifying, right, is labeling emotions in precise ways so that you can, officially quote unquote recognize what emotion you're feeling a lot of times and, and i remember this specifically from the book he talks about we're feeling dual emotions at the same time well i'm tired but you know i'm excited to be here well how could you be tired and excited and and really what that comes from is our inability as human beings to recognize the emotion that we're actually feeling um and so when we can start to label our emotions, we start to identify the range of words that we use and we're communicating with others how we really, really feel. Well, I'm frustrated because, or I feel unheard because, you know, whatever, whatever that is, um, he talks about that, right? So anyway, uh, this all kind of leads into this, um, this, this problem as society as we hide our emotions we actually work harder to not let people know how we really feel so we're building this kind of cocoon around our emotions and then we get uncomfortable sharing those emotions now those can be good or bad emotions right sometimes you know we have people that get really really excited and they have to tone it down a little bit instead of just letting their true emotions out and really what that can cause, he doesn't say it always causes this, but it can cause this um, inability to heal from whatever trauma we have as a childhood. And maybe that's actually connected to suppressing some of your emotions. I don't want to get into all of it. This is kind of a teaser. I want it to look like, you know, what this, what this um, looks like for you uh, in your building, right? But this, this idea of applying your emotional skills with your teachers and then helping them help their students. So the title of the book, right, is the permission to feel. And so when you think about your workplace environment, your school, right, or your um, place of business or whatever, whatever you're listening to this or your classroom, are you allowing others or are you giving them permission to feel deeply? honestly truly are you giving them permission to feel um when right and this is his argument when you do that or when as a leader or a classroom teacher you give students or teachers the ability to feel it creates a positive learning environment and learning climate when kids feel safe we know this they learn better and so, you know, kind of going through uh, the the idea, there's a there's a, he has a bunch of stuff connected with this, and I I don't want to ruin the book if you're going through it, but um, thinking about a couple of questions um, is um, I just want to ask you as we finish up, uh, what one word might you use to describe the emotional environment in the home you were raised in? And then why? So that's one question, right? Is to think about your own history uh, and the emotion that the home that you grew up in and how important that is in creating who you are as a person. Um, and then the other question I really, really like is, did you have the permission to feel? And it, and it stated earlier, right? This goes deep into, um, we had a kind of a duality home where my mom definitely gave us permission to feel, um, but my dad practiced the secluding, bubbling up, rounding up his own emotions, and then in turn teaching us how to um, suppress our own emotions. And I can actually see a little bit of both of them in, in myself uh, as, as a leader, but also as a father and as a husband and how that um, influences where, where I am today, right? Anyway, thank you for watching. 
Uh, you can find more on School Story on all of the social medias. We love you. We appreciate you. And I'm glad that you're here.